you come from lord adam and lady e that is both honor enough to erect the head of the poorest beggar and shame enough to bow the shoulders of the greatest emperor on earth be content this quote by cs lewis gives so much hope tampered with a little humility the creation of the first man and woman is a very prominent story across all cultures of the world this might be out of pride or out of the need to ease the mind about such a haunting question the question of creation of humans let us start with the first pair of homo sapiens from the indian stories the story in the bhagavad purana goes that after the creation of the 14 lokas vegetation animals asuras devs yakshas rakshasas gandharvas sanat kumars manas putras and many many more entities brahma dev the first creator the first prajapati was resting and was reflecting on his work in this relaxed state out of his heart that is his mana arose a male figure similar to him and a female arose from his right side as these arose by themselves and not out of brahma dev's conscious thought they were the swayambhus that is the self formed creatures the man was called manu the one who came from manu the heart while the woman was called shatarupa the name shatarupa has been interpreted in various manners she who has a hundred forms or looks she who is as if hundred forms combined to form this one form third the one who is more beautiful than hundred other beauties or the one capable of giving rise to a hundred forms manu is also where we get the sanskrit marathi or hindi word for humans manushya while the word manu refers to the first man it is also the title given to the progenitor of the human race after each pralaya or dissolution a day of brahma is called a kalpa which consists of 14 cycles of creation and dissolution in which the title of manu is passed from one person to the other thus there is the original swayambhu manu and 13 manus who carry his mantle for more information about this jump to our video on the hindu kala chakra system right after this one the abrahamic traditions that is judaism christianity and islam refer to the first couple as adam and eve in islam the names become adam and hawa the story in the christian and jew tradition goes that adam was created out of clay and eve out of a rib bone of adam the islamic thought is similar but some say that the stories don't mention which one out of the two was created first another interesting story is that of lilith the first wife of adam according to the jewish traditions lilith it's said to have been created out of the same clay from which adam was created she was said to be rebellious and hence banished after this incident god created the more demure eve from adam's rib bone jumping now to the germanic that is the norse stories we find the names ask and embla as the first man and woman they were created by odin the king of asgard in some versions it was the creatures called wolves which created the first humans and odin along with two other gods breathed life into them further it is said that odin created a fence around them to protect them from the giants of jotunheim this fenced area came to be known as midgard or earth now the greeks the greeks are a whole different bunch as there is no specific reference of the first human pair to be created the story goes back to when the gods came into power by defeating the titans the two titans Prometheus and Epimetheus didn't fight in the war and hence Zeus the king of god gave them the responsibility to create human kind and bestow gifts for every creature on earth and so every creature got something such as speed strength claws horns etc when it was man's turn there was nothing left to give so Prometheus gave man the ability to stand upright like the gods further he got fire from the mount olympus that is the abode of gods and gave it to man when zeus came to know of this he was furious and he punished prometheus with eternal torture zeus also decided to punish man for accepting such a gift he ordered the creation of the first human female who was given curiosity 
by Zeus himself along with other abilities from other gods. She was married off to Epimetheus. She was also given Pythos. Pythos is a big jar and was told never to open it. This jar contained all the vices such as diseases, disorders, hate, jealousy, etc. And thus, the first woman was born. Now the Mayan stories make a very interesting reading material. Here too, like Greek mythology, there is no mention of a specific first pair of humans. The Mayan stories rather speak of experiments conducted by the sky and sea gods to form creatures that would remember and glorify them. The first attempt to create life resulted in the plants which disappointed the gods as they had neither memory nor speech. This was followed by the creation of animals. But animals had memory but did not have speech. After this, the first humanoid creatures were made out of clay. But they dissolved in water and did not have a heart. The gods, disappointed, sent a huge flood and cleansed these human creatures off the earth. In their second attempt, they used wood. These creatures were able to speak but did not have memory and hence the gods were disappointed once more. Thus, they destroyed these two. The survivors of the second attempt to create humans became the monkeys. The final attempt created humans from a mixture of maize and water paste, which created the creatures just as the gods wanted, capable of speech and memory. Thus, these became the first four humans who prayed to the gods and populated the earth. In another version, the humans were created in pairs so as to keep them distracted and preventing them from becoming godlike themselves. The Indian stories have striking similarities in the creation of first man and woman with the Abrahamic and the Norse stories where they are very well defined. However, there is where the similarity ends. While each narrative had something very unique from the other, the principal differentiation of the Indian stories from other stories is that humans were never a conscious creation of the creator. The Indian origin of humans is similar to the birth of Brahmadev from Vishnu's navy. Just as Brahmadev came into existence without the conscious efforts of Vishnu, so did the first man and woman out of Brahma. Furthermore, no special status is accorded to humans in the Indian thought, whereas in Abrahamic traditions, humans were the Almighty's most prized creations demanding the reverence of angels and all animals alike. Nor are humans fashioned with specific provisions which we see in the Norse myths where Odin builds a safe space for Ask and Emla on Midgard. Midgard is nothing but the earth. The Greek thought of humans being created by Prometheus as an act of subterfuge is lacking in Indian thoughts as well as the other stories. Where in Greek thought, fire is a wrongfully given gift to humans, in the Indian thought, it is the divine element of life, the spark of knowledge and the messenger, Agni, between humans and gods. The challenge arises as we compare the Indian perspective with the Mayan perspective. Every point is a point of difference with absolutely no similarities. In fact, the biggest difference is that in the Indian and Norse thought, the aspect of keeping creatures away from something is missing. Abrahamic beliefs have the forbidden fruit while the Mayan gods prevent humans from being godlike, and the Greeks go one step ahead by adding negative aspects to the human life. The spontaneous generation of Indian thought might also be an aspect of the predominant karma philosophy, where one doesn't have stone inscribed rules but rather has basic guidelines of the nature of action and reaction. As Manu and Shatrupa were born by their own spontaneity, this made them responsible for whatever happens to them. The conscious creation of humans in the other philosophies might be a hint which subjects them to an obvious humility towards the Creator. Both philosophies are humbling and empowering in their own ways. Again, the point of these comparative videos is to get an overall perspective regarding the diversity of different cultures and their stories. We do not attempt to prove one culture superior or inferior over the other. If you found our insights informative and intriguing, then do follow our page Satyalok on Instagram and help us to spread the greatness of ancient India with as many people as we can. Stay tuned 
stay educated and last but not the least know your culture by self investigating the truth shubhaste pantanah santu jai hind jai bharat